Hi there. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for, for your patience. We're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, just wanted to welcome everyone and say thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar on distance learning uh, focus on differentiated instruction and supporting students with learning disabilities and ADHD in the classroom. Uh, just wanted to let you know that we are recording the webinar today. So you don't have to take notes, but feel free to if you like. And we will be sending the slide deck from this webinar, all of the resources and the recording to you later on this week. So please feel free to share freely and widely with your colleagues. We know it's a very challenging time right now with scheduling. And those of you that are on with us today, thank you so much for taking your precious time and joining us today. We know that you don't have a lot of it these days, but please do encourage your colleagues to sign up anyway. You can sign up for as many of our webinars as you like and we will still send you the recordings afterward. So at this time, I'm gonna cut my video feed just because it makes it a little easier for me to navigate the webinar on my end of things, and we'll get started. So my name is Wendy Farkas. I'm one of three resource services staff at Trillium Demonstration School. I'm an Ontario certified teacher and am seconded to the provincial schools branch from the WRDSB. My role is to help educators and school boards across Ontario who are seeking to support their students with severe learning disabilities and ADHD. I'm a big fan of project-based hands-on learning and educational technology in the classroom. I've worked with exceptional and struggling students throughout the duration of my entire career as I taught technological education for many years and later moved into a more focused special education role. I'm joined today by my esteemed colleagues, Fleur Lay and Shannon Scullion, also in resource services to support and mediate discussion today. Please make sure you check out their webinars coming soon. You can register to attend on our website. We will share the link with you later on in this presentation. Fleur and Shannon, please say a quick hello. Hello and welcome. Hi everybody, hello and welcome and thank you. Um, I know it's a busy time, especially with our pandemic. So thank you for being here. Can everybody hear me when I'm talking? Is my volume okay? Give me a thumbs up, Shannon, if you can hear me. Thank you. Let's really quickly go over some of the Zoom features. You can see us, but we can't see you. So please use the Q&A room below for any questions that you may have. Fleur and Shannon will be monitoring the Q&A and chat room, and we will pause later on to answer any questions. Please know that many of the materials and resources we're sharing with you today have been acquired through research, professional development, professional readings, and social media. We hope that these resources will be shared amongst your colleagues and provide some support as we continue to develop relevant and engaging lessons for all of our learners. We also want to highlight some of the ways in which you can engage struggling or distracted learners, whether in a brick and mortar style or an online classroom. This slide deck, a recording of the webinar and all resources will be emailed to you later this week. Differentiated instruction and universal design for learning are identified in the Learning for All document as three effective instructional strategies. And I'd like to delve a little bit deeper into differentiated instruction and universal design for learning. You may have seen these images before. In the first frame, we have equality. Everyone gets the same thing. This works for some, but not for others. In the second frame, the support has been differentiated. Each person gets what they need. But in the third frame, we're going to take, take it a step further and remove the barrier right from the start. This represents universal design for learning. These two approaches are important for effective teaching and learning, and they support the creation of inclusive digital classroom environments. 
Differentiated instruction is a cyclical process of finding out about the learner and responding through differentiating. As we continue to learn more about the learner, we continue to respond by differentiating instruction further with increased precision and effectiveness. The goal of Universal Design for Learning is to use a variety of teaching methods to remove any barriers to learning and give all students equal opportunities to succeed. It's about building in flexibility that can be adjusted for every student's strengths and needs. That's why Universal Design for Learning benefits all students. UDL is a framework for how to develop lesson plans and assessments that is based on three main principles. And to quote understood.org, the first principle being representation, UDL recommends offering information in more than one format. For example, textbooks are primarily visual, but providing text, audio, video, and hands-on learning gives all kids a chance to access the material in whatever way is best suited to their learning strengths. The second, action and expression. UDL suggests giving kids more than one way to interact with the material and to show what they've learned. For example, students might get to choose between taking a pencil and paper test, giving an oral presentation, or doing a group project. And the third principle, engagement. UDL encourages teachers to look for multiple ways to motivate students letting kids make choices and giving them assignments that feel relevant to their lives are some examples of how teachers can sustain students' interests. Other common strategies include making skill building feel like a game and creating opportunities for students to get up and move around in the classroom. We have some really exciting resources prepared for you later on that will demonstrate differentiated instruction and universal design in the classroom. In this climate, we felt it important to address remote and hybrid learning models. Our comments are based on our collective experiences at Trillium and our knowledge of the learning disability and ADHD profile. Educators across Ontario are facing many new challenges this year, including potentially working and teaching in online learning environments. Many of us already are teaching in online or hybrid learning models. PPM 164 was introduced in August of 2020 to set guidelines and requirements for remote learning. To quote this policy, PPM 64 ensures that students across Ontario receive a consistent approach to remote learning in times of extended interruption to conventional, in-person or brick and mortar learning. During full or, or partial school closures or under any periods of remote learning, it is crucial to keep students engaged in their learning. Students should have access to a school community, a support network, and authentic educational experiences in order to continue to progress in their learning. The Ministry of Education defines remote learning as learning that, off, as learning that occurs when classes are taught at a distance. Synchronous learning happens in real time with live teacher support and asynchronous learning does not happen in real time, but it can still be really valuable to all learners. Synchronous learning is essential and supports the well-being and achievement of all students. Meeting with students regularly will build and strengthen relationships. Struggling or distracted learners will be more engaged and participate when they know you care and you're invested in their success. Live check-ins can help to connect you to your students and provide a platform for encouraging feedback and support. However, students with learning difficulties and ADHD will struggle to maintain focus and attention during live lessons. When planning synchronous lessons, consider recording the lesson and sharing it with students who want to re-watch it later to reinforce the new learning.
Many of us have had to recreate materials that we previously used in our regular classroom environment. Posting materials online does not necessarily mean though that they're accessible to our LD learners. Students with learning disabilities often struggle with tasks that require reading and writing to demonstrate knowledge. Remember, when sharing digital worksheets, please ensure that they are in an accessible format, such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Your LD learners will be able to use a, a text-to-speech and speech-to-text function of Google Read and Write, for example, or Immersive Reader in order to access the material. If you're scanning worksheets and sharing PDF files on your online learning platforms, please ensure that students have access to and know how to use text annotation tools, such as Doc Hub or Kami. These tools will convert a PDF or image into an optical character recognition file. Note that standard PDF and images are kind of like pictures. They're not really readable or writable files. Let's take this worksheet on the right for an example. I scanned it and I uploaded it as a background on my Google Slides. Students can then use text boxes to type their answers on top. A great hack, but Google Read and Write won't work on this file. Teachers can also create audio files or screencasts to record instructions and lessons to minimize the amount of reading required for the student to understand and complete tasks, or try using a flipped classroom model. A flipped classroom is an instructional strategy and a type of blended learning that reverses the traditional learning environment by delivering instructional content, often online, outside of the classroom hours. It moves activities, including those that may have traditionally been considered homework, into the classroom. This is a great platform for creating assessment as learning opportunities through observations, conversations, and products. YouTube and Vimeo are great sources of educational videos or create your own on Screencastify. You can record your screen or browser while you move through a lesson, activity, or slideshow. Screencastify is also a great tool for students to use to present their learning, such as in summative projects. In order to navigate distance and hybrid learning models, many school boards are sharing a list of board approved digital tools. For these purposes, many of the resources we're sharing today have been created using G Suite. We will also highlight some great web-based tools, extensions and apps, but please do check with your school board and avoid your board's red tools. Let's further explore how these tools Let's further explore these tools and how they support differentiated instruction and universal design for learning in the classroom. First, we'll take a deeper look at Google Classroom and G Suite. In Google Classroom, you're able to assign individualized assignments to each student depending on the expectations in their IEP. Google Forms allows us to create tests, quizzes, surveys, and more using a variety of response formats. It could be true or false, multiple choice, short answer, and checklists, which can reduce writing expectations for LD learners. Forms can also be individualized. Data is collected and can be converted into multiple formats. And the neat thing about all of these G Suite tools is that they're synchronous with Google Read and Write. Google Read and Write is a powerful tool that supports students who have difficulty using text to communicate. The text to speech and speech to text functions allows a student to focus their energy on reasoning and thinking rather than decoding and encoding. It has other tools such as highlighters, word prediction and dictionaries. In Google Slides, 
and Google Draw, students can also use these great tools to create, edit, and collaborate to make oral presentations. I'm gonna draw your attention over to the right side of the screen now. And we're gonna talk a little bit about providing feedback to students that's accessible. When providing feedback through comments on assignments in your Google Classroom, note that students with learning disabilities may actually struggle to read the comments. At Trillium, sometimes we get students that come to us for remedial reading instruction and intervention. They may be in grade eight, but reading at a grade two level. So imagine you're a student and you can't read three and four letter words or maybe single syllable words. Moat is a Chrome extension and a really powerful tool for providing audio feedback to students who may struggle with reading. Once installed, you'll see the Moat icon in your comment box every time you add a comment to a student's work. Moat will record your voice comment and transcribe it for your students so they can either read the comment or listen to the comment. So it looks a little bit like this. Once you've installed the Moat Chrome extension, every time you're in uh, a Google Doc that you've assigned a student or an assignment in Google Classroom and you go to add a comment, you'll get a pop-up that looks like this. This already looks familiar to you, I'm sure. But you'll see the Moat logo pop up as well. And it will give you the opportunity then to press the play button and record a comment. And the student will then be able to listen to the comment later on. But as you can see here, the typing in the text below, it also transcribes the comment. So it allows for all types of learners to access your feedback. Vocaroo is a web-based recording tool. You can create audio files to attach to classwork, comments, emails, you name it. Let's take a look at this one together. So I'm gonna click on this hyperlink. Vocaroo is a web-based tool, and when you go to the website, it is www.vocaroo.com. Don't worry about writing it down. We'll send the, um, the slideshow to you later on, so you'll have that URL. Takes you to a screen that looks a lot like this. All you need is access to a headset so that you can record your comment and hear it played back to you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just click on the record button. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And you can pause or stop along the way. You can play the recording back to hear it. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And then you can save the recording and share it in a few different ways. So you can attach the recording to a QR code that students may scan with their mobile device. You can download the actual MP4 file and save it on your drive for future use. Or what I tend to do a lot is you just copy this link and you can paste it into your presentation. Uh, Vocaroo recordings are fairly long. You can make fairly long. I've made recordings up to five minutes long using Vocaroo, but they don't house them online forever. So if it's a recording that you're planning to use in the future, I would choose the download option so that you can save that recording and not have to go back and do that again. To make comments more accessible and easy for our struggling learners to understand and use that feedback, you can also insert YouTube video links in comments on Google Classroom. So if you're doing a research project or a writing piece and the student is maybe struggling with some grammar, you could pull up something from your playlist of a, like a quick little grammar video or some tips on maybe constructing a proper sentence and insert that video link into the comment on Google Classroom, and that way they can watch the video. And it's just a little bit more helpful for our struggling learners with learning difficulties in ADHD, because not just reading about it, they can actually watch and understand what it is that they're supposed to do to improve their work. Choice boards and hyperdocs 
are also a great way to incorporate universal design for learning principles into your classroom. Choice boards and hyperdocs are engaging and interactive. They can be used in either synchronous or asynchronous environments because choice boards allow students to navigate their learning expectations independently and at their own pace. Choice boards and hyperdocs can take a topic or a unit that your student usually considers less than interesting and reel that student in, making the content more interesting and relevant to them. Take this digital citizenship choice board, for example, on the right. This takes students through important information they need to know to navigate the online world around them, but it gamifies the material by guiding the student on a quest to earn their digital citizenship badge. We'll share the choice board with you now in the chat room. Fleur or Shannon, if you don't mind, share the choice board link with our audience in the chat room so that they can take a few minutes to explore. So to see the chat room, if you're participating in our audience, just click on the bottom of the screen and there should be a menu that pops up. Right around the middle, there's an icon and it should say chat. If you click on that, it should enable the chat. Um, Fleur and Shannon, make sure when you share in the chat room that you send it to everybody. Don't just send it to the presenter. And once our audience sees the link, I'd like you to go ahead and, and take a minute, take a look at it. So click on the link to open it up or just copy and paste it into your browser. And we'll just take a couple of minutes to explore it. If anyone's having trouble accessing, just let us know in the chat. So the way this choice board is designed is you start at step one. It's very visual. So it will meet the needs of many different learners, students that need visual prompts to understand. And it's a guided activity. So by starting at step one, they click on this link to hear the instructions and the instructions of how to use the actual choice board guiding them through different activities. These activities could be done throughout the week. Um, you're absolutely welcome to keep this. We've shared this file with you. So make a copy of it, make it your own. You can change it, you can share it. You can add breakout activities if you wanted to this to turn into like a, a week long activity. And the idea is by the end of the week or by the end of the unit, when they get to step number nine, they're awarded their digital citizenship badge. Okay, I'm just gonna give about one more minute for us to take a look at that choice board and then we'll start up again. Is anyone else having trouble accessing the link? If 
We'll share the link with you later on. I'll check the share settings to make sure I haven't blocked anything, but we'll share it with you after um, the presentation today. And I promise you'll have access to it and you'll be able to use it and make it your own. Okay. Let's move on to another great tool. So how do we keep distracted students engaged when they're at home? Here, we use ChatterPix to create interest in our presentation. ChatterPix is a free mobile app that is available for Android and iOS devices. It takes any image, whether it's a still photo of you, your student, an object or a piece of clip art, it allows you to draw a mouth on the image and create a voiceover. Fleur, could you please drop the link in the chat room now for the ChatterPix video? Unfortunately, the ministry blocks YouTube on us, <laughs> are on our OPS devices, so I can't play it live for you in the presentation, but the video is embedded in the presentation and when we share the slide deck with you, you'll be able to show it to your colleagues but Fleur is just gonna drop the YouTube link in the chat room right now for the ChatterPix video. It's only about 30 seconds long. Please do click on that link to watch the video. We'll take about a minute to give you the opportunity to do that and then we'll move on. Oh, good, you could access it. That's awesome. Thanks, Liz, for that feedback and for letting us know. If there's anybody else online with us still, please do just drop us a quick note in the chat room. Let us know if you're able to access it and when you're done. It's only a 30 second video clip, but we just wanted to share it with you so you, you could see what the tool can do. Great. So imagine creating your own animated bot, like in the choice board that we shared with you on the last slide, or adding animated images of historical figures or characters from literature to reel students in and make your presentations come to life. What about an interactive animated all about me poster that students create and share with their peers. Remember to keep learning fun and interactive. Make sure you sign up for our October 15th webinar called Feedback Assessment and Evaluation LD ADH Learner Focus, where we're going to feature many more tools and offer a complete digital swag bag. I'm just gonna take a pause right now and ask if there are any questions. If you have any questions, please do feel free to drop them in the chat room. Just click on the bottom of the screen and you should see the chat. And then Fleur and Shannon, let us know if there are any questions and we can, we can try to answer those questions. I see someone's raised their hand. Um, to the user that's raised their hand, just go on ahead and type in the Q&A or the chat room. Oh, here we go. Okay, will this webinar be available online? So thanks for that question. We're recording this webinar live. Once the recording is ready, we will email it along with the slide deck and any of the resources. So 
That includes um, the digital choice board. We'll send you the Google file for that so that you can edit it. You can make it your own. You can share it with colleagues. You can change it. You can add to it. Um, and we'll send that out a little bit later on this week. Um, I see a question here. Our board is not allowing Google Suite. Will Moat still work with Microsoft tools? So Moat is a Chrome extension and it's designed to, uh, to be synchronous with uh, Google, Google products and Google documents. So if you're looking to create audio files, then what you could do is use Vocaroo. If you go to www.vocaroo.com, maybe Fleur or Shannon might just type that in the chat room right now, www.vocaroo.com. It's web-based, so you don't need to be tied to any program to use it. You just need to be online and you can create an audio recording and then take the link that I showed you earlier and paste that into the comment instead. Okay, are there any other questions before we move on? We just have a couple more slides. Okay, I'm gonna move on then. If you do have any more questions, go ahead, just type them up and drop them in the chat room now. And I promise we'll go back to them at the end of the presentation because we'll be able to see them. All right, let's have a little fun together and do a quick review. Flippity.net is a web-based tool, so another web-based tool where you can create online flashcards, Jeopardy style games, random name pickers, Mad Libs, scavenger hunts, and a ton of other really cool things. So I've created just a couple of flashcards to show you today to demonstrate how one of the tools works. And it is also synchronous with G Suite. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link and it's gonna take us to three flashcards that I've prepared for us to do a little bit of a review. So you can choose and customize the color of the flashcard. You can customize the color of the font. Um, you, can, um, you can also, it's also accessible. So if I click on this tool right up here, it looks like a speaker with an X on it, it's muted right now. If I click on that, it'll read the flashcard to me. So students that can read, can go ahead and read and use the flashcard. Students that might be struggling to read can click on this tool. I'll show you now. P is a link process of finding out about a learner and responding by differentiating. Okay, so the student would maybe read this or listen to this, try to guess the answer if they're studying, or this is a, maybe an exit card activity that you might wanna use at the end of your class to still keep them engaged. And when you're ready to find out what the answer is, just click on the card and it gives you the answer. Cyclical. All right, so the next two we're gonna do, we're gonna test your knowledge. So anybody who wants to participate, you don't have to, but if you wanna participate, type the answer in the chat and then Fleur and Shannon can read your answers out to us and we'll let you know if you get them right. So our next cue card is universal design for learning is based on a guiding framework of three principles. One, representation. Two, action and expression. And three, blank. So what do you think it is? What's the answer? Misa has said engagement. Engagement. Well, let's check to see if Lisa's right. All right, Lisa, good job. You got it. It is engagement. And the cool thing about this is if you're using these for students to review, you can share this web link with them and they can review these as many times as they need to until they learn the concepts. Okay, let's look at our last cue card. The purpose of PPM 164 is to A, ensure that students across Ontario receive constant education 
while distance or consistent education while distance learning? B, just another memo to read. Or C, PPM, perfectly prompt marking strategies. Oh, Liz says A. Liz says A. Mm -hmm. Any other answers? Is everyone saying A? Yep. And that's something I would do too to try and gauge all of my kids. I kind of, I wait and not give the answer right away. We have three people who have said A, three answers for A. Amazing, thank you, Fleur. So let's let's take a look. Are we right? We are right. We are right. So as you can see, this is a really neat tool for um, for review, for formative assessment, for studying purposes. Um, when you create flashcards, it also will sort of change the format. So if you look up here, these tabs up here, if I click on list. You know, if I'm the type of person that maybe wants something in more of a chronological order to study, I can click on list and I can read through it. Again, it's accessible because if you click on this little audio um, icon here, it will read it to you. If I, as a teacher, if I want to create, um, you know, a bunch of cue cards and share it uh, with my students, or maybe I want uh, to give my students an assignment, have them create cue cards and share them with me or with each other. Um, there's a practice setting as well. So the student would read and then type their answer in here and it would tell them whether they're correct or not. And it kind of keeps score up here for them, which is neat. They like to see that. And also it can turn this uh, flashcard activity into a matching activity as well. So no matter what this year brings us and what hurdles we have to face, remember, let's all stay connected. You can create your own online professional learning communities on shared platforms such as Google Currents, Google Groups, Google Slides, or even Microsoft Teams. I know we have a, we've got an attendee out there who's not using the Google platform, so lots of creative Office 365 products that you can use and Microsoft Teams um, is that version of, of that, of collaboration. You can create online shared folders, collaborative groups, um, and you can hold video conferencing on that. Connect with each other and students in the school community through choice boards or learning menus, teacher cameo appearance, uh, appearances I've seen at my daughter's school and other classes, or maintain those morning announcements. Make sure to include special events like virtual field trips, sporting events, digital escape rooms, going to the museum or theater on a rotating basis. And please do stay connected with us and let us know if we can support you or your students in any way. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please, please, please always feel free to reach out. Again, we're going to be emailing this slide deck, the recording, and all of the resources from today's webinar. I'll make sure that that digital choice board um, works. I'm sorry, I probably just messed up the privacy settings. We'll send those to you later in the week. And remember, visit our website to sign up for upcoming webinars. Our webinars range from understanding the student with the LD and ADHD, exploring the new math curriculum and growth mindset, incorporating assistive technology and educational technology in your classrooms, and supporting struggling readers in the classroom. The link to register for our webinars is, is right here on our screen below. Fleur or Shannon, if you don't mind, just dropping one more link in the chat room for everybody for our workshop registration. And again, we know how busy you're, you are and we thank you for taking that little time that you do have uh, with us today. But we're going to record all of these. So if there's something that you wanna see, if there's something a colleague wants to see, something you wanna share, just log in to our website, sign up anyway, and it's gonna populate the data and share with us who signed up. So we will email everybody, anybody who signed up for the webinar, 
because we know sometimes you're doing this early in the morning and or you're making dinner and you're listening to a webinar whenever it is that you have your prep time this year or time to to focus and plan also feel free to reach out to any of us um, our contact information is on the screen right now in front of you we have our email addresses up and our direct line and phone extension. Also, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, feel free to add me at Ms. W. Farkas for updates with regards to upcoming webinars and some other exciting things that are in the works, but we're not gonna share that quite yet with you. Before we sign off today, are there any more questions? Anything that we can help you with? If there's anything you need, please, just mention it in the chat room. We can hang around here for a couple more minutes. It's 1243. So we've got a couple more minutes. We're happy to, we're happy to stay online. If you want the opportunity to work one on one with me as well, I'm very passionate about educational technology. So if you'd like to do a make and take or something like that, design your own digital choice board or learn how to use Flippity or Chatterpix or any of the tools we showed you today, send me an email at wendy.farkas at ontario.ca and I'd be happy to connect with you and uh, do a one on one video conference or even set up a, a video conference with you and a few of your teacher friends and we can do that together as well. Okay, I'm just going to check the chat room. Fleur or Shannon, are there any questions? No, nope, there aren't any questions. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time and we hope to see you again soon. Remember, sign up for our webinars. We've got a great lineup for you. Take care.